the Les and Dottori's concept of minor literature. I said that for me, minor literature will mean a literature written by members of minority groups. But the term itself, minor literature, comes from the thinking of two Frenchmen, philosopher Gilles Deleuze and psychoanalyst Felix Gattori. They developed the idea, the concept, the term, in a book they wrote about Franz Kafka. Deleuze was a philosopher from the same generation as Derrida and Foucault. If you heard those names before, if you haven't, you learned about them in the theories course. Gattari was a psychoanalyst and a very untraditional one. They are often associated with postmodernism or post-structuralist philosophy. This book um, towards the minor literature, the, the reading of Kafka, is one of their shorter works and one of the most influential in the field of literature. Kafka was a Jew writing in German, the language of the Austro-Hungarian Austro Empire. He lived in Prague in Czechoslovakia, which detached which was detached from uh, the empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, during Kafka's lifetime. So he experienced the breaking apart of the empire during the First World War. He was writing in a language that wasn't fully his, uh, but is in German, because he was a Jew, it wasn't considered his language. Nor full, and it wasn't even fully the language of the country where he lived. It was an official language when uh, the, Czech, uh, the Czechs were part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but uh, now that it was an independent state, it was no longer the language of the people there. Kafka, as some of you must know, wrote uh, strange stories, uh, the most famous of which is The Metamorphosis, a novella about a man, Gregor Samsa, who one morning wakes up and discovers that he turned into a bug, a vermin. Why this happened to Samsa, we never get a direct answer. Literary scholars and other thinkers have been arguing about it ever since it was published. Gilles Deleuze and Félix Gautoré developed the term minor, uh, minor writing or minor literature in order to understand Kafka better. Or you could say that they use Kafka to develop the term minor literature. At any rate, they also developed it in order to say something more general about how literature works and operates especially literature re uh, written by people in a situation similar to Kafka. Writers from minority backgrounds writing in majority languages. So what they say is very pertinent for our understanding of the course. They mention in their uh, first chapters, uh, they mention three features of minor literature. D territorialization written, that is to say something that was written outside of w uh, where one expects to find that language the fact that it's political, it connects to issues of power and equality, to issues of who has the resources and who doesn't have access to resources, and it's communal the writing by minority writers, minor literature, always uh, represents a group and not only uh, just one individual writer. Let's uh, read short excerpts from uh, the short excerpt that I gave you to read and uh, let's see how they present these ideas. A minor literature doesn't come from a minor language. It is rather that which a minority constructs within a major language. This is what I talked about earlier. The point about minor literature 
is not that it comes from a small nation where they speak a language that only few million people speak. He Hebrew or Serbian literature are not necessarily minor literature. They are just small literature, you could say. Few people can read them in the original language. Minor literature is written in any language, often in the most dominant languages like French, German, English, though it's not always the, mo the biggest languages or the wi most widely spoken languages. The term has been used to discuss uh, Arab, Arab Israelis writing in Hebrew as well. The point is that someone from a minority takes hold of the com common language and make it, makes it their own, or at least uses it. As we saw in tribal ceremony, it is often because they don't have any other language. They have to write in uh, German because that's the only language that they know. They have to write in English because that's the only language that they know or that can help them become a successful author. What do they mean by deterritorialization? Tough word to say. Well, several things, but we can take it as finding this literature where we do not expect it to be. Finding the language in the hands that are in hands that are unexpected. A language that developed in one place and by a certain kind of people finds use in a, a different place by different kinds of people. Deleuze and Gautori describe it as a sense of impossible writing. They mean, I think, that it should be impossible for a certain, from a certain perspective, but in fact it is there. For people with the narrow views of who should use any given language for writing literature, minority writing is a kind of scandal. For example, Kafka was writing in German in Prague where the common language was Czech. This is German outside of Germany, out of, outside of the territory where German was developed. It is furthermore German at the hand of a Jew, not a Christian German writer who sees himself as part of the German tradition. He is outside of that tradition, he is outside of the nation that uh, sort of owns that language. Uh, he's, uh, so he's uh, doubly excluded. He's not part of the German ethnic community and he's not part of the German territory. Uh, to take it uh, to my direction, we will read a text by writers who are excluded from the status as natural users of the language. English took form in England. The letter it turned into American English through the English uh, colonists in uh, America. But we are going to read stories by Arab people who learned it, the Native Americans who learned it, uh, Indians and other Asians, African Americans. And they don't look English. They don't look maybe like the writers that we study in the history of British literature or even some of American literature. And yet they have to use English, that's their language for writing. And they do so in a way that challenges the identity of what an English speaker looks like, or what an English writer looks like, or what an American writer looks like and sounds like, and the kinds of things that bother them and concern them in the writing. From a certain narrow perspective, they seem like they do not belong to uh, British and American traditions. And yet they are, they do belong to Western culture and to American culture. They, they live there despite perhaps not being wanted or expected. So the first part of the course is about identity and how writers negotiate being both in the territory of uh, American and Western culture and language and outside it at the same time. The second part of the course will be dedicated more explicitly to the use of language 
in special binary ways. Bill Deleuze and Felix, Felix uh, Guattari write about language a lot. And I, I'm quoting, the impossibility of writing other than in German is for the Prague Jews, these people like Kafka, the feeling of an irreducible distance from their primitive Czech territoriality. So they don't really belong to the Czech territory because they are writing in German and not in Czech. And the impossibility of writing in German is the deterioratory is the deterritorialization of the German population itself. An oppressive minority that speaks the language cut off from the masses. So the people writing in German are sort of out of the territory. It's like a paper language or an ar artificial language. German that in Germany is maybe a living language becomes a kind of dead or artificial language like uh, Latin or Esperanto when it's written outside of the territory, which creates a kind of minor literature effect. This is all the more true for the Jews who are simultaneously a part of this minority and excluded from it, like gypsies who have stolen a German child from its crib. Jews writing uh, in German are accused of being these outsiders who steal the German people's babies. That is the le German language. The lesson Gotovi are not accusing them of that. They are saying other people may have accused them of that. They are both disconnected from the Czech pe uh, speakers and the German speakers. In short, Prague German is a deterritorialized language appropriate for strange and minor uses. That's why it's perfect for Kafka writing strange stories about people turning into bugs. And Deleuze and Gattori immediately compare this to the American context. This can be compared in another context to what blacks in America today are able to do with the English language. So your situation is adjacent to the mainstream, but not quite belonging to it, creates an opportunity to do things with language that maybe more mainstream writers with a more comfortable relationship with their language and their culture cannot do. And Deleuze and Gattori really see this as a kind of opportunity to create different, a different kind of literature. So uh, being part of a minority is not just a problem, it's also an opportunity. Why is Kafka such a great writer? He could utilize his position as an outside writer, as a minor writer, to the best extent possible. The second characteristic of minor literature, according to uh, Deleuze and Gattari, is that everything in minor literature is political. They write, in major literature, in contrast, the individual concern, familial, ma uh, marital, and so on, like about marriage and, and relationships with uh, your father and mother, joins with other no less individual concerns. The social milieu, like this, the context of the, of the society described in the novel, serving as a mere environment or a background. It's just the setting, it's not the theme. Minor literature is completely different, they say. It's a cramped space, it's tight space, forces, forces each individual intrigue every plot hook, every adventure, to connect immediately to politics. According to this passage, what is the difference between minor writers and major writers? The major writers can concentrate on their own concern, their own personal individual concerns, 
without necessarily connecting them to a wider social or political issue. You can have a story about a father arguing with his son and it will be only a story about how difficult it is to handle parents or children. But when you are a part of a minority, the way political power struggles and inequality connect to your everyday life, to the way you live and the decisions you make every day, and the way it is connected to the possibility of you even learning to uh, write literature or learning to write at all, makes anything you write already political conversation between a son and a father has the context of larger social and political struggles. It's not just a story about the father and son. Nothing is just a story of, about one individual when you are writing minor literature. This is something we can remember as we read. The last part uh, of the course will be about explicit uh, protest or resistance, but we will remember throughout that oftentimes minority writers are being political in their writing even if they don't really intend to, or even if what they write seems mostly personal. The point about the political is similar to the next point, which is that literature has a collective value. Because not as many minority writers exist as my majority writers, it is more difficult to get published, recognized, or even find the time and education to write if you are poor, an immigrant, or excluded in any other manner. Because there are fewer minor writers, the writing is important to the whole community. It represents, in a sense, the whole community. To throw an example, a Lebanese American writer cannot escape being seen as representative of Lebanese in general or even all Arabs or all Muslims. Even if they write something that other Arabs or Muslims would not agree with. They because they are prominent minor writers, they gain the role of representing, of standing for their entire community, their entire minority. Writers often complain about this feature, saying, I am just speaking for myself, I'm just one person. So in this course, we will often move back and forth between saying, this is a specific author, or this is part of the voice of the community, this is representation. We will try to respect individual voices, but we'll still know that in our world, a minority writer is writing for a public that will take them as representative. To finish with uh, Deleuze and Guattari, I want to point to a path we are not taking. For them, minor literature is not just for minorities, but for anyone trying to do something revolutionary within, within a major established language. We might as well say that minor no longer designates specific literatures, but the revolutionary conditions for every literature within the heart of what is called great, what is called great or established literature. Even he who has the misfortune of being born in the country of a great literature must write in its language, just as a Czech Jew writes in German or in Uzbekian, writes in Russian. Even if you're just born, starting to write now, you still have to find your, your place in a major tradition, in a great tradition. So if you want to do something new, you have to do something that is in some way minor. We will not talk about all literature as minor literature or all modern literature as minor literature. Rather, we will stick to those by actual minorities. That said, I want to emphasize that it will be fair to say that what you learn here is definitely useful for reading literature in general, not just 
literature from minorities. A, because we will practice reading, and that's always, that always improves your reading. And because many 